Hi, and welcome to the Sonic Laboratory's Mathematics Department. Today I will be explaining how we use network partitioning methods to aid our biologist friends in fighting Lay's syndrome. First is clustering algorithms. For the sake of reliability, we wanted a way to form a consensus from the results of many different community simulations. As input into our consensus, we needed an initial community detection algorithm which produced a degree of variation over separate trials. This ruled out the Markov algorithm we discussed in class, as its reliance on deterministic matrix multiplication produced little to no variance between trials. Instead we chose to move forward with the Louvain algorithm. Its scalable community sizes, variable clusterings and fast execution were perfect for producing a large amount of data. To understand Louvain, we must be familiar with modularity. It is a score between minus 1 and 1 which compares the density of links within a community to the density of links between communities. Finding the absolute maximum of this value is computationally hard, and so in 2008 researchers at Louvain University published a heuristic method to efficiently approximate the maximum modularity. The Louvain algorithm was created because the networks they were considering, like Facebook, Google and the internet, were too large to play with in the period software. While the yeast network we are considering is orders of magnitude smaller, Louvain remains the most appropriate choice due to a scalar known as resolution. Simply seeding a lower value for resolution into the formula for modularity causes Louvain to produce communities appropriate to the size of the yeast PPI network. The intricacies of Louvain were discussed in class as well as being widely available in the literature, so we will just note that it is a non-deterministic procedure. This means that several attempts at clustering a network will result in several formations of communities with similarly high modularity scores, from which our consensus function will be able to determine a closer approximation to the true clusters. This brings us to our earlier question, what is a consensus function? The typical consensus function is designed to obtain the best partition of a network using information from multiple partitionings. Best here is usually defined using some metric like normalized mutual information, which measures the statistical information shared between separate trials. The idea is to find the partition that maximizes the average normalized mutual information. However, this problem proves to be exponential in time, so many approaches use heuristics to find good approximations. From the heuristics available in the literature, we created a variation of an instance-based approach, because it was widely used, adaptable to our needs, and tractable enough to code in time. An instance-based approach involves constructing a consensus matrix, storing the proportion of trials in which nodes i and j belong to the same cluster. The consensus function can then be found through network partitioning algorithms, or using agglomerative clustering algorithms. With a consensus established, we need to focus on determining individual therapeutic target proteins. To disrupt a disease, we want to influence how proteins interact. It then seems logical that we need to identify nodes which dominate in terms of interactions. This is exactly the purpose of centrality measures. The simplest we used is degree centrality, which assigns a value to each node based simply on its degree. A slightly more sophisticated technique is eigenvector centrality which ranks nodes based on the number of adjacent nodes which themselves have a high score. Both of these measures are typically used to find nodes which are the most central to a community, and with the most important nodes in each community found, we hope the biologist would be able to reveal a cluster's purpose. Once a functionally relevant cluster has been found, we need a way to change or limit its function by cutting it off from the flow of information. Two methods to achieve this are between the centrality and local bridges. Betweener centrality ranks nodes based on the number of geodesic paths they can be found in. By finding nodes that have both high betweenness and high degree slash eigenvector centrality scores, we hope to find the bottleneck proteins whose removal could severely limit the function of particular nodes or communities. A similar approach which circumvents the need for centralities is to find local bridges, which are the geodesic paths between communities. By collapsing a local bridge, we cut communication between adjacent communities and complete our desired task. For an in-depth review of how we used all of these networking models, head on over to our mathematical approach page, and don't forget to like and subscribe.